In a significant move with the AI industry, Alphabet's Google is currently in advanced discussions to invest a substantial amount of money into Character AI. Character.ai, for those that don't know, this is a company that is backed by A16Z and it was actually created by some ex-Google engineers. Now, this one has become incredibly popular because it's actually doing better than literally the ChatGPT app in some geographic locations, I think. Um, and it, it's, I, I think OpenAI like ultimately is winning with ChatGPT most places, but Character.ai is incredibly popular in the United States, which is kind of a coveted area and demograph. Um, and essentially, it's you're creating like little chat bots um, that people can chat with. You, you know, it's got like Einstein and Da Vinci and it's, you know, you're creating chat bots of people on character.ai, right? They're the characters. In any case, today on the podcast, we're going to be diving into the whole story here, why I think this has major implications, why I think the GPT store from OpenAI is prompting this acquisition or this investment and where I see this whole thing going in the future. I want to give a really quick shout out on today's episode to the over- 197 investors who have invested in the AI box crowdfunding campaign on Republic were over $280,000 invested. And I am so grateful to all the people that believe in this vision and see what we are building here. We are building the GPT store, um, except instead of a handful of open AI models that you can use, you can use, will be, you'll eventually be able to use thousands of models all of the openly available models on the market will be on one platform from google meta OpenAI, everyone right not just one company so really excited if you're interested in investing in ai box you can go to republic.com slash ai dash box i'll leave a link in the show notes but let's get into the podcast episode Welcome to the world's number one AI podcast, AI Chat. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Make sure that you go to AIbox.ai, link in the show notes, to join the waitlist for our new AI platform. We're going to be launching an incredible platform that allows you to build anything you want with workflows um, in AI. So you're able to chain together chat GPT and image generators and audio generators to make really powerful apps for your organization or you can host them on our marketplace and actually generate royalties from them. So make sure to go to AIbox.ai and join the waitlist. In addition, if you like the podcast, if you could do me a massive favor and please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. This helps me be able to get better guests on here as they check the reviews to see how you guys are liking it. So if you could please do that, I would really, really appreciate it. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. According to some sources familiar with the matter, the investment, which of course is a very dubious claim, you know, according to sources familiar with the matter is my least favorite source on anything, but it would look like there's some people that are, that, you know, Okay, so this is that's that's a that's a claim that I absolutely hate in politics. But when it comes to tech, um, you know, the information uh, reports like this a lot, and they've actually been correct. Back in May, according to sources familiar with the matter, uh, the information reported that OpenAI was going to launch a GPT app store, and of course, they did end up doing that. So I think in this case, it might be a little bit there. There might be a little bit more water to it, but it's always hard when you don't know who the source is. In any case, they got to keep it secret because if they say that they're leaking company secrets, you know, they get uh, penalties and fired and stuff. So it, it kind of makes sense. In any case, um, this potential investment um, that it looks like Google is contemplating making into character.ai um, could amount to hundreds of millions of dollars. And I think this is really underscoring the rapid growth and escalating demand for AI-driven solutions. Now, this, I think, is completely feasible. I, I think this very well may happen. Character.ai is a company backed by A16Z. It has come out of left field. It was started by Google employees, but it's exploded, right? And the reason why people are investing in it is because it has incredible traction. It's very popular. They have an uh, iPhone app that is really, really popular in the United States. It's giving OpenAI a run for their money. Um, I think this potential invest investment is possibly taking the form of convertible notes. Um, 
So that is apparently another source was saying that, but I think this really signifies a deepening of the already established collaboration between Google and character.ai. The startup extensively uses Google's cloud services and also tensor processing units, um, TPUs, for training its AI models. Um, and I think this is really a testament to the synergy between the two entities. Now, a lot of people think character.ai is just an API on top of OpenAI, and I think they have a lot more of their own actual tech and AI embedded in this. Um, I think despite attempts to um, some people have been like trying to like reach out to Google and figure out what's going on. They're not saying anything. There is no comments being given. But character.ai um, was founded by Noam Shazir and Daniel DeFridis, who have been really building a niche in the AI realm. I think the platform allows users to interact with virtual renditions of celebrities like Billie Eilish or a bunch of different various anime characters. Um, it also establishes users to create their own chatbots and AI assistants. Um, although it's free to use, character.ai does offer a subscription model. They have a $10 a month, um, which kind of gives subscribers faster access to chatbots. But the startup's chatbot offering has a ton of different roles and tones, and these particularly uh, resonate with the 18 to 24-year-old age group. That's who I think is mostly using this right now. Um, they account for about 60% of the site's traffic. So According to data from SimilarWeb, you know, we're able to kind of look at the age groups uh, visiting the website. So it's definitely a younger demographic. Um, I think this demographic has been really important in positioning character.ai as a provider of more engaging personal AI companions. This is definitely a shift from, you know, other things like ChatGPT or Google's Bard. Um, character.ai's appeal, I think, is definitely evidenced by its impressive web traffic. I think they have around 100 million monthly visits. Um, within just six months of launching. So obviously this thing grew incredibly fast. Beyond Google's interest, character.ai is also engaging in discussions to raise equity funding from venture capital investors. I think this move could potentially value the company at $5 billion, that is B billion dollars. Um, and I think this comes on the heels of a March funding round where the company raised $150 million. It was led by Andreessen Horowitz, which valued it a billion. So 5x from March is not bad at all. But in today's market, I mean, is it is it that crazy? Um, I think while the talks with Google are ongoing and the deal's terms are subject to change, the interest from a company like Google, I think marks a significant milestone for character.ai. It also is kind of reflecting a broader trend in the tech industry where major cloud service providers like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon are increasingly investing in AI companies. They know if they can get um, you know, the AI company on their cloud platform, uh, it, it's going to help drive a ton of bandwidth use, a ton of uh, usage, essentially. And I mean, even myself, I've had offers from different cloud providers um, for AI box. And so it's very, very tempting to make great deals where they're going to give you a bunch of free credits or a bunch of free compute. And it's hard to turn those down. Um, and it, I think it's a very smart move by these cloud players. So these investments often encourage the use of specific cloud or hardware services, which is kind of critical to resource intensive process of building and deploying AI models. Anthropic, I think, is kind of a company that's famous for they, they got a $300 million investment from Google Cloud at the beginning of the year, took it, did a bunch of stuff on Google Cloud. Then, you know, uh, AWS gave them Amazon's web server, gave them a $4 billion deal, sort of an optional deal. Um and uh, now they're doing a bunch of stuff on AWS. So it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure how Anthropic's going to play it. It seems like they're just jumping on anyone's platform that'll give them money. Um, I think this trend, however, has definitely caught the attention of regulatory bodies. So the U.S. Federal Trade Commission Chair Lena Khan recently highlighted the San Francisco event that the agency is scrutinizing these kinds of investments by cloud providers and AI startups, examining potential anti-competitive behaviors. This is very interesting. To me, I think that's ridiculous. I hate it when the government tries to get in and regulate stuff. Like if AWS is giving you money and Google is giving you money and Microsoft's Azure is giving you money, like just take the money. I hate like, oh, like it's anti-competitive. It's like, yeah, well, at the end of the day, if anyone thinks that uh, anyone other than AWS is going to be dominating the space and then if we're getting upset by like Google and Microsoft, like, Cloud hosting is incredibly expensive. I don't think anyone else is going to give those three companies a run for their money. And so if they kind of fight it out and try to get people over with deals, I don't know. It seems silly that you try to regulate that. In any case, Google's move to potentially invest in character.ai I think really underscores the rapidly evolving landscape of AI technology and an increasingly significant 
um, you know, really the significance of strategic partnerships and investments in shaping the future of this sector that is all obviously growing incredibly fast. So this is definitely an area we'll continue to follow and I'll keep you updated on if character.ai secures the bag and raises the funds. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.